plenty of us have fallen in love with cars through movies. Whether it was The Fast and Furious, James Bond, or my personal favorite, Herbie Fully Loaded. I love you, Lindsay. Movies can be a great showcase for cars. Some fans fall in love with a movie car so much that they decide to build a replica. But what happens when your Jurassic Park Jeep or your love bug goes from a fun fan project to copyright infringement? In case you've been living under a rock, our friends over at B is for Build are finding out. In May of this year, the channel had their Mustang body swap project seized, and then they had to take down all the videos of the car. So why did that happen? Well, I'll tell you. Chris over at B is for Build is an awesome guy and makes cool videos that I love. I watch him all the time. This year, he and his shop were working on a ground up resto mod of a 1967 Fastback Mustang. They took a 2015 Mustang chassis, engine, suspension, all the cool modern stuff and fitted the 67's body panels around it to make the perfect blend of classic Mustang looks and modern performance. But one thing about the car caused a lot of problems. They named it Eleanor. Eleanor is the name given to the silver and black 67 Fastback Mustang in the 2000 movie Gone in 60 Seconds. The copyright of that name also owned by a company called Eleanor Licensing LLC. The LLC claimed that B is for Build was infringing on their copyright and they had the channel take down every video featuring the Mustang and then they took away the Mustang. Turns out the rights holders for the Eleanor name had a history of doing this sort of thing. They even sued Carol Shelby and won. They basically own anything named Eleanor as it pertains to Gone in 60 Seconds or Mustang. That's a crazy amount of legal power. That basically means that any Mustang, regardless of what it looks like, can be seen as an infringement on the LLC's copyright if it gets named Eleanor. And to show how they have the grounds to do that, we need to look at the original Eleanor. No, the original. The main rights holder to Eleanor and Gone in 60 Seconds is the widow of H.B. Haliki, who was the creator of the original Gone in 60 Seconds in 1974, not the film you may know with Nick Cage from 2000. The 1974 film featured a yellow 1971 Mustang Mach 1 named Eleanor. Look, the movie wasn't a big hit, but because Eleanor exists as two different Mustangs, this copyright seems to have grown to encompass any Mustang named Eleanor since the character is not a specific Mustang. So now, 46 years later, a project car that doesn't resemble the original, isn't being sold for profit, and isn't finished gets taken from its builder all for having the same name. And it's not like cars even have names. I mean, I know car people like to name their cars, but it's not like it's etched into the body like a VIN number. How do you prove in court that a car is named something? Do you put it in the middle of the room and call out names and see which one it responds to? No. And if you don't name the car Eleanor, do you have the right to own a pepper gray metallic 67 Shelby GT500, a car and paint color that were both available long before the 2000 movie was made? I know it might be a bit ridiculous, but the name makes a difference. It changes this build project from a car to a character. As a car, the design patent for the 1967 Mustang Fastback lasted for 14 years, which means that if you built a replica of a Fastback and sold it with no badges, Ford may not be able to stop you. But a copyright is different. It can last for 90 years from the creation of the character. So we could be seeing lawsuits like this around Eleanor for another 44 years. You know, I have to wonder if this company is just sitting on a warehouse full of incomplete Eleanor replicas. That's gonna be one crazy episode of Storage War. It sucks that B is for Build's Resto Mod Mustang project was taken down from YouTube. Eleanor or not, I thought the idea of the swap was just really cool. And if you did too, don't worry. B is for Build is doing it again with a 67 coupe this time around. So go check it out. Those guys are awesome and I love their channel. They, they deserve more subs. Okay, so the Gone in 60 Seconds camp is pretty litigious, but what about other movie cars? Is this something that could happen with any replica? Gotham Garage is a custom fabrication and hot rod shop based in Temecula, California that built up a business building and selling replicas of the 1966 Adam West Batmobile. 
They use a mold pulled from one of the original cars and drop a fiberglass shell onto the chassis of a C4 Corvette. That sounds really badass. Gotham Garage owner Mark Tao loved building these cars, but he also had his eye on the 1989 Tim Burton Batmobile. He got a mold, waited 14 years for the design patent to expire, and then started building those Batmobiles as well. And unlike B is for Build, these weren't resto mods. These were full-blown replicas with screen-accurate interiors, working canopies, and even machine guns that would pop out of the hood. But that didn't stop DC Comics and Warner Brothers from coming after the little SoCal shop. The court case made headlines in the prop making and movie replica communities, especially because other builders were worried about their own projects. Tal's defense hinged upon an interesting caveat in copyright law. Copyright is for creative works and does not allow for useful articles to be copyrighted. Tal argued that a car is a useful article and not a character. The argument looked good when it came to the 66 Batmobile, especially when you compare that one to the Ford Futura concept car on which it was based. There was not a lot added to it to make it a Batmobile, but the argument fell apart when the conversation turned to the 89 Batmobile, which is not based on any existing car and has an iconic design work all over it that doesn't serve any function or purpose other than to look the part. Gotham Garage lost the case, unfortunately, and was asked to stop selling Batmobiles and to destroy their molds. Customers that had cars that were in progress were left in a tough spot, but Gotham Garage was able to sell a few unique custom hot rods to those loyal customers and keep the business going. Gotham Garage is actually still up and running and they've got a series on Netflix that you should check out. It's called Rust to Riches and when you take into account that they used to build Batmobiles, their builds start to make a lot more sense. <laughs> they are ridiculous. So it looks like the Batmobile is a character as well and I guess that makes sense because while it doesn't have a name like Eleanor, it still has a unique title, the Batmobile. Now, I'm no lawyer and even though court cases can hinge on precedent, there's always a chance that a bad decision gets made. So something qualitative, like how much of a character or useful article is your car, literally ends up being decided on a case-by-case -case basis, it seems. A car having a name seems to be a good indicator that it can be copyrighted as a character. But what about a movie car that doesn't have a name? The junk-covered DeLorean from 1985's Back to the Future is one of the most recognizable cars in the world. It has inspired plenty of replica builds and is one of the only reasons most people know about the DMC-12 at all. So are these road-going replicas getting seized as well? Well, no, not really. Take a look at Bob's Prop Shop. They've built and sold nearly 30 Back to the Future DeLoreans. They've taken them to charity events, rented them out for weddings, they even got the cast to sign some of them. They're making money off of someone else's IP just like Gotham Garage was, and they aren't the only fabricators doing this. Plenty of other time machine builders use the DeLoreans to make a profit. So why aren't DeLoreans getting seized? It could be that because the DeLorean in Back to the Future never gets a name, it's only ever referred to as the DeLorean or the time machine. While it is stylized, it's a tool that the characters used. It's a useful article. Because people are still using the logos and IP like Mr. Fusion. Also, let's face it, if a company like Universal wanted to sue you for copyright infringement, they'd be able to bleed you dry with any legal fees before you get anywhere near a courtroom. No, I think there's something else going on here. I'd like to think that the rights holders for Back to the Future are just cool that way. They don't see copyright infringement that cuts into their profits. They see it as an opportunity for fans to get to show love for their franchise. And by doing so, they fall more in love with that franchise. By not suing any of these builders, Universal basically waived their rights to sue in the future. They're not protecting their copyright, at least not to the same extent that others have. That could have been a bad decision for the Back to the Future rights holders, but as it turns out, it's a long play and it turns out to have paid off for Universal. Around 2012, Universal wanted to restore the original Back to the Future time machine. The A car, as it's known, was parked on the back lot at Universal Studios Hollywood and had fallen into major disrepair. They set about doing a full museum restoration and the community was there to help them. Parts of the restoration were much easier because the research had already been done by the fans. Certain components were sourced from people building replicas, and even fans who hadn't built a time machine could donate to the build. Our writer Joey actually donated to the restoration, and he's got a few of the pieces that needed to be replaced in a display box. 
probably cost a lot of money. <laughs> All of this was done in time for the 30th anniversary of the film in 2015, the year Marty McFly went back to the future. So what are the rules for building a replica car? I guess it all comes down to the rights holders themselves and if they want to pursue litigation or not. It seems the real problem is the fact that these copyrights last for so freaking long now. 90 years? Are you serious? And this isn't a problem isolated to the car world. When copyright was first established in 1790, it was a max of 28 years. But the copyright term has been extended multiple times. And one of the main contributing factors to that is Disney's copyright on Steamboat Willie, the first Mickey Mouse cartoon, which is currently under copyright until 2023. And if history repeats itself, that copyright term will be extended yet again. Not only protecting Mickey Mouse for a longer time, but Eleanor as well. Disney now owns the rights to a huge portion of our popular culture, and nobody outside the company can show off their interpretation of these characters and stories without fear of getting sued, which flies in the face of art history, wherein our entire human experience is built off interpreting and changing existing art. I'm going a little too into the weeds here, but the B is for Build case is a perfect example. Not only was Chris interpreting a character, but he was making it better and pushing a car we collectively love forward. But it got taken away from us. Now, I don't wanna unfairly demonize Eleanor Licensing LLC, truly, okay? They've exercised their right to protect the copyright they own. A few months ago, we talked about Ferrari sending Dead Mouse a cease and desist over his Ferrari. These are different cases, but the principle is the same. If you let just one person infringe on the copyright, that opens you up to more people doing it more easily in the future. And if you depend on that copyright for income, then you kind of have no choice to defend it. What we should be focusing on is the laws that let these ridiculous legal decisions like taking Chris's car away happen in the first place. And that's when we'll see things change. Until then though, I'll be right here hanging out with you guys and reading those comments. So leave one for me, please. <laughs> I'm alone in my apartment. Follow Donut Media on all social media, at Donut Media. <laughs> Follow me at Nolan J. Sykes. Subscribe if you'd like to see more. Be kind, I'll see you next time.